the mode jumpers inside the Thunderpole T600 and PNI Escort HP7120. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters in PMR 446, or just the red squirrel on the old CB. So, you're looking at the inside of the Thunderpole T600 right now. Our point of interest is these jumpers here. Now, different combinations make the radio do different things. As it's shipped, the jumpers are over the caps, but not actually jumpered over, which means that the default is actually as they are, which puts it into the default multi-norm CB mode with 4 watts out the back. Different combinations allow different frequencies and different power output. <laughs> Well, it's four, switchable between 4 and 8 watts, allegedly, but it never gets that far. So, let's see what the different settings all mean. Okay, so, as you can see from the picture I've just put up on the, the screen, I've changed the jumper to no jumper on the top position, but a jumper over the bottom position. So, if I power the radio up now... It starts in band HD. That's band HD. So, I'm going to do... I'm going to bring in Spectrum Analyzer Tiny SA. If I key this radio up now on the channel and setting it's on... I'm sure you'll be able to see this because I've got the fill light on. As you can see, it's now transmitting in the 10 metre band. I'm into a dummy load, so it's all good here. Because <laughs> that's a part of the, looks like a part of the 10 metre band I don't really want to be transmitting FM in. And that's a 4 watt power output, which you can't see because the meter's just slightly off shot. Well, it's actually less than that. I'm just going to swing the meter around so that that's also visible. So as you can see, just shy of 3 watts which the radio would do normally. So this is the microphone. So to get 8 watts out of this, which you can do if it's if the jumpers have been changed, press and hold the scan button, press and hold the PTT, turn the radio on. And now it's transmitting a little bit more power. The meter's saying about 5 watts. The people who do this modification say about 8 watts. So... So HA through HI is pretty much the vast majority, if not all, of the 10 meter amateur band. So this radio can be quickly and easily converted to a, a 10 meter radio, although it's not really much use on 10 meters unless you want to do FM and it doesn't have a repeater shift. So that's not ideal. So let's change the jumper over again. Right, so jumpers changed over this time so that both caps are over both pins. So what I will do now is power up the radio and show you what that does. Radio is back in multi-norm mode. So it's just running on 2781 at the moment. No, I don't think this, uh... yeah, this isn't too accurate. No, this isn't too accurate, but that's fine. <laughs> we don't need to worry about the frequency in this instance. So, 3 watts, as expected, on the power meter. So, however, here's what you can do. Scan, PTT, power. Supposed to work, it didn't. Let's try that again. There we go. Try that again. So, if you put the jumpers over both like that, the radio is now in high power mode. The meter says it's doing about six watts in that mode. So, that's multi norm with the eight watt addition. So, if you want to 
keep the multi-norm channels, just the, the radio as a standard CB, but you want that extra power, which I don't recommend, you move the jump both jumpers over. So, let's set them again. Okay, so the jumper is now on the top set of pins, but there isn't one on the bottom set of pins. So, power up the radio, see what we get this time. Now it's come up DE, but I'm going to push and hold the mode button because you can still do this. So go to AE. So AE through to LE is what you get in the mode selection. So I've changed the um, uh, spectrum analyzer to be a little bit tighter. So it's within 25 to 35 megs. If I key it up now, starts around about 25.6 roughly. And it ends, the radio's range ends at, let me get that to go back in, 29.757 I'm getting on there. So the high power mod, actually, that's channel 9, so let's uh, see where it actually does end. So I should be checking that on 40. There we go. Actually ends at 3103, roughly. So 25 to 30 megs. So basically the whole range of the radio, and that sort of tallies up with the this radio's RU band. So RU band being Russian. So less said about that, the better. So the high power adjustment should be available. Scan PTT power on. Radio will come up and the H will display. So that's the modifications for the jumpers in the Thunderpole T600. Okay, so now you're looking at the same position inside the PNI. Now, when I took the jumpers off originally, they flung across the room, never to be seen again. So it's still stock default at the moment. So I'm going to go through the jumpers in this as well. I'll use the jumpers from the T600. I've actually put the screws back into that because with the jumpers off, it is in default mode and it's therefore default CB radio. So I did make some notes for both radios. I have a notepad to hand, which has all of the information I need. So we'll start with the order I've got them on this sheet. Right, so the PNI, I've got the jumper in one jumper on the top position, no jumper on the bottom position. So let's power up the radio, see what it does. Okay. Let's have a look at the band band plan for that. Okay, let's put it the right way up so you can actually see this. I've disconnected the speaker. Here we go. So the radio's now the right way up. There's the speakers in the lid, so you won't hear any sound from this. Turn back on for none. Right, so I need the microphone for that. Because we're going to need to key this up. So I could just use the Thunderpole one. But I do have the PNI one. It's actually under my notepad, which is actually quite helpful. So... I'll plug the microphone in, like so, and let's go to channel one. This is on AE mode, I believe. Let's just check that, make sure I'm not seeing things. Yeah, it's AE mode. Let's bring the spectrum analyzer back in so we can see that as well. And I'll just knock the meter across as well, because we'll need to see the power output. So, it's about just shy of 3 watts. The transmitted frequency I'm getting on a spectrum analyzer is 25432. I wrote that down roughly in that sort of ballpark. So, 25432. 
Do we have the high power mod out of interest? Let's see. We should do. Let's press the RF gain and the PTT and see what we get. We might have to actually press the PTT. And get that to work. Yep, we certainly have the high power mode. So on the PNI, it's RFG and PTT with the jumper with the jumpers in any position that's bridging the two pins together on each set of jumpers. So that's now doing six watts in that in that frequency mode. So let's um, switch to. So it's AE to LE on this radio. So we go to channel 40 in the LE mode, and that'll give me the entire frequency range. Yeah, it's coming up about 30.2. I was getting somewhere in that ballpark for that. So again, it's uh, roughly equivalent to the Roo mode. And that's actually dropped about 5 watts there, according to the Zitagi meter. Okay. Going to change the jumper over again. So I've moved the jumper down to the bottom position. So let's see what that does. Now on the Thunder Pole, I believe that was the amateur band, uh, 10 meter amateur band. So let's see what it is on here. It's 10 meters again. So high power should be available. PTT on the mic, I'll show you this actually. So PTT, RF gain, power on. And then you get an H in the display. That's coming up to close to seven watts. So again, there's no repeater shift and it's not really much good in certain parts of the 10 meter band where SSB and CW are used. It's not really any good on the FM simplex parts. So if I go to the band setting, because we're going to find out what the freq rough frequency range is. It's not accurate. Okay. So AA, HA rather, so I'm looking at it at a funny angle. So HA, turn off. Turn back on. So an HA, channel one. We're getting says about 27.85, but I think it's probably a bit higher than that. This isn't the most accurate device in the world. So I've switched off, pushed the AF button to put it back into band set. HI mode. And then still running at high power. So 20's top on uh, HI. And that's 29.7, about 7.778, roughly, according to this. I have to bring that in a bit because you can't see the screen really there. And I'm looking at the, the power meter and that's showing just a shade above 5 watts while it's in the high power mode. Okay, so... That's those two settings discovered. Let's have a look at the third potential jumper setting. Okay, and finally for the PNI, the jumpers are now across both sets of pins. So the one at the top is over both pins, the one at the bottom is over both pins. So, as you'll have seen on the screen, because I will have put a little picture up in the corner or somewhere, wherever I can fit it. So Let's see. Okay. We're now back into multi-norm mode. It started on channel 22. These do that out of the box when you first buy them. So you actually have to set them up for the UK mode. So we're going to do that now. And that's all done. So it starts on channel 9 on the UK mode. So in the UK mode, it's just the usual. Frequency is not quite right on the spectrum analyzer because its resolution is not brilliant. So, it, with those jumpers in, if you press the PTT and the RF gain, turn the radio on, you now have about seven to eight watts in the UK mode. And you'll have noticed that signal meter 
is showing all the bars in the high power mode. So I'm not sure if you can. So to turn that back off, PTT, RF gain, radio powered up. There you go. So as you've noticed, it's actually showing all the bars when in high power mode, which is actually impressive. So that's the jumper settings. I'll go back over them again for both radios. And I'll conclude the video there. Okay, so a recap of what the jumpers do. So with a jumper across the bottom set of pins on the Thunderpole T600, but not the top set of pins, puts the radio into 10 meter mode. You can enable high power when in this mode by pushing PTT and scan when powering up the radio. Putting a jumper across both sets of pins is the radio in its standard multi-norm mode. However, pressing PTT and scan will enable the higher power 8 watt output. Then finally, jumpering just the top set of pins only puts the radio into the equivalent of RU mode. High power can be enabled by pushing PTT and scan whilst turning the power on. An H will show on the display when high power is active. On the PNI Escort HP7120, jumpering the top set of pins only, but not the bottom set of pins, puts the radio into the RU mode, which is 25 to 30 megs. An 8 watt power is enabled by pushing RF gain and PTT whilst turning on the radio. Jumpering the bottom set of pins only puts the radio into 10 meter mode. 8 watts is enabled by pushing the PTT and RF gain whilst turning on the power. And then jumpering both sets of pins, the radio is still a multi-norm radio, however you can enable the high power output by pushing PTT and RF gain. In all cases, H will be shown on the display when this mode is active. Okay, so that's how you modify these little radios in order to go onto the 10 meter band, expand the frequency range and enable the High power, which is allegedly 8 watts, but according to my zetagimeter, it's closer to 7, so it probably isn't anywhere near 8 watts anyway. So, I'll demonstrate again how to put these into high power mode, because it's pretty much the same sort of process. So I'm just going to reset that back first to normal power mode, because it was. Make sure I'm pressing the PTT while I do that. Okay, so I'll demonstrate again. So here's the microphone for this radio. This is currently in low power 4 watt mode. Obviously I don't want to key this up because there's no load on it at the moment because I took the dummy load off. So high power mode. Switch the radio off. As long as both jumpers are bridged or one of the jumpers are bridged, this is currently set up as both jumpers are bridged. So as long as they're bridged, press the PTT, press scan on this radio, it's RF gain on the PNI, Turn the power back on, release both the buttons, and H will show just on the display. I'll have to point at it a little bit, it's just there, pointed it with a pair of pliers, so that's what I had to hand. And that it will now transmit somewhere approximately 8 watts, it isn't actually 8 watts unless you start turning things up inside. But I really don't recommend overdriving these, these radios, because that will shorten their lifespan greatly. So... I hope that's been informative. I don't normally do modification videos, but that might actually be of interest to some viewers. So, it's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446, or just the Red Squirrel if you like on CB and PMR 446. So, simply for now, I'll catch you in the next one, and if you want to buy me a coffee, you can do. Or if you want to subscribe to the Patreon, you can also do that. So, 7-3 for now, and I'll catch you in the next one.